Welcome back. We'll be underway momentarily with our JV matches. As we'll uh, kick off with uh, Jason Moreno against Andrew Gary. Ezekiel Mute. Nunez to take on Nate Dill. Chase Barnett against Colton Buckridge. Thomas Melton go against Ryan Kelts. Ricky Mendez against Ethan Makovich. Jesse McDonald against Austin Hill. Then we'll come back and Jesse McDonald will raise, wrestle Colton Moore after the duel. And Chase Barnett will wrestle Caleb Johnson. And Jason Moreno will wrestle Blaine Calson. So yep, it will be Andrew Gary in the first match for PV against Jason Moreno. Jason's set to go. Okay. Northeastern, living your world, learning ours. For more information about Northeastern or classes available to you, go to www.njc.edu. Matt Weber, coach for Platte Valley. I think he's still up the head table, so I'm not sure. A little confusion going on there. Uh, Jason Moreno's ready. Uh, coach is getting over his place, and I think we're ready to start the Beat Digger Flat Valley JV duel. Moreno gets a head tap from Gary. And both of them tall and lean. And Jason weighed really in at 113 tonight. You know, on a single leg. Going at 120 pounds tonight. And Marino. Yeah, there he gets a takedown. And now he's outside with an ankle pick. Over here to the edge and we'll be out of bounds. And we'll get set by Valley in their dark blue singlets. Marino. And on the right side, and he gets a little anxious, going to get a caution on the start. Andrew Carey at 120 pounds. No wages listed. Moreno might have got away with locked hands, but Rocky's not quick enough to get around there for that. Moreno looked like he's trying to set up a cradle. And he's working and driving. He's got that cross face in there, can't lock up the hands. And he's got it tightened up, locked up, steps out to the side, trying to crank it over, and over goes Gary. And he's stacked up pretty high. He's about to pop out the top. But uh, Marino's picking up the back points. And now he's readjusted that cradle a little bit, and he's going to lose his cradle. And he'll pick up Three near fall points go up uh, by a score to five to nothing. Now, no, a double leg tackle puts Garrett down. And a quick stand up again by uh, Andrew Gary. And a single leg by Jason Marino maintains control. There's hook the knee trying to work that. And there's a half Nelson by Marino. Pick and step. And he's got uh, Gary back on his back. In, hooked up the head, scooped the head, getting chest to chest, and there's the pin for Jason Moreno. How about that? 43 minute 43 for Jason. And the beat diggers pick up a victory here in the JV side. Let's take a 30 second timeout. We'll be back with more on 1010 KSIR. <laughs> KSIR.com. Welcome back to Estes Park as we get set to go here. I think we've got Ezekiel Munoz against Nate Dill. And let's see, huh? Get the size on that. Nate Dill's left is at 126 yeah, yeah, and so is 126 Ezekiel. pounds. One point green. What did he do? Oh, he didn't have his shoes late. Uh, 
Didn't have his shoes tied right or something. That's a penalty point going to Nate Dill. He's supposed to have a little strap around him too, I think, but we're underway. Ezekiel is down by one. Munoz reach for a knee. He'll snap down as they spin around and back into the ten foot circle. A nice little shot there by Nate Dill. And a whizzer by Ezekiel. And oop, but he's gonna get dumped down from the two point takedown. And a three point lead for Nate Dill from Platte Valley. Oh, he's got a nice cheap tilt set up. He's got a rooster tail tilt, but anyway, he's getting tilted over on his back. Pick up a couple back points here. Oh, he's going to give him three for that. That's six points for Nate Dill from Platte Valley. He's got the leg scissored with an arm. Drag Ezekiel back in. He gets up in more normal riding position. Ezekiel's got his face in the mat, arms way out there. Now Dale will grab the near arm. Right arm, throw an arm bar in there. With the, trying to put a half Nelson from the far side. Arms are long, but not quite that long. Uh-uh. Ezekiel trying to crawl forward. Get some wrist control there. Two on one by uh, Dill. Keith Munoz broke down. Uh, get an arm bar put in from the right side. Munoz trying to limp arm out of there, but then he gets caught in a kind of a front headlock, and he's on his back. He's in deep trouble there. He's trying to bridge out of this. And he'll survive the period, but he'll give up another three-point move. So. A three-point near fall. It's nine to nothing for the Platte Valley wrestler, and he'll win the toss. Going to defer it. Coach said, "Go top." Yep, been put on his back twice already in the first period. Probably a good choice. See if he can't do something from the top position. We'll move on to the left side. Underway here in the second period. Oh, quick spin. And it drops down to a single leg. Trying to work off the double leg and put uh, Dill back down. But, oh, Dill just gets dumped. Dumps uh, Munoz over. Got him exposed. I think he's going to give him a two-point takedown and now giving up back points. What do you call that move, Jason? They just had him in a double underhook there, didn't he? he kind, of, kind of a headlock, Kazumi headlock, what do you call that thing? Yeah. <laughs> Not quite, but something like that. A couple back points coming up, too. As Ezekiel gets back to his base, but he's down 13 to nothing. Did you just give him two points there, Yeah, him? just two. Okay. And he's got working that arm bar in from the far side. He's got the left arm in there. Yeah, Zeke just working needs to control right his arms side. a little more. He gets one arm out and gets it pulled right back in. He's grabbing that wrist coming up for a half. Nelson pulls that off. Here comes that chicken wing. Need to get up there and watch. Get a little got high. A wrist on the other side. Got it reinforced. Nope. Here comes back points, and there's the pin. That doesn't go the bee diggers' way. And that's uh, 3:22 into the match. So let's take another short timeout. We'll be back with Chase Barnett against Colton Buckridge on 10:10 KSIR and KSIR.com. Welcome back to Estes as uh, Chase Barnett takes on Colton Buckridge, Jason. Uh, I think so. He's got two matches here. I hope that it's Buckridge first. I didn't hear over the intercom, did you? No. Well, we're going to call him Colton Buckridge anyway. I'll, I'll take my headset off and listen over there. Double leg tackle by Buckridge. Puts Chase Barnett down. Gets... Two-point takedown right off the whistle. 
Barnett got a victory in his uh, first match over Finn Turney of uh, Estes Park. Oh, rooster tail tilt by Buckridge. Looks like Platt Valley is going to use that move a lot. Already seen yeah. it twice. Going to pick up two near. Oh, he got three. three down there. He's counting them fast. He knows it's a long drive down the canyon. Oh, and gets put oh. in a near side cradle of his back, and Chase Barnett gets pinned. 51 seconds into the match. Oh, boy. How about that? Bingmeyer Phillips Insurance. Looking to find insurance for your car, home, or even for you. Call Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance with two locations, one in Fort Morgan, one in Brush. They can help you with your home, car, health, and life insurance questions or provide a quote. Give them a call at Ingmeyer Phillips Insurance. And we're set to go here. This should be Thomas Met Metlin. It's Ryan. Yeah, I better look at the roster. Ryan can't Keelitz. Read this. They said over the intercom at 138 pounds. Keelix. They tie up ear to ear right off the bat. Oh, a headlock attempt by Keelix, and, and uh, Thomas Metlin pulls him down to the mat, gets the takedown. Oh, and a switch attempt by Keelix, gets the two point reversal. We're tied at two. There's that rooster tail tilt from the standing position, and they're going to go out of bounds. <laughs> Boy, they like that, don't they? Yeah, it's been working for them. So a takedown by Metlin, a reversal by Keelitz. We're tied at two, only 25 seconds into the match. And Metlin sets on the bottom. <laughs> Rocky's giving instructions on how to uh, set on the Bobcat. It's a little hard to tell from here. Stand-up attempt by Metlin, peeling the wrist. He gets away, gets the escape, goes up three to two. They tie up ear to ear again. Inside, good fireman carry by Thomas Metlin. And he's going to come out on top, get the takedown. Stand up right away by Keelitz. There's that switch again. A half by Metlin, puts Keelitz right to his back. And there's the, oh, there's the pin. I see it right here. There's the pin of Thomas Metlin. One minute pin. How about that? That's I think that's I think that's his first win of the year, so that's a good job by Thomas Metlin. He did a good job of just scrambling. I love to see him just fight and scramble like that. He's one of the hardest workers in the room. I know coaches are excited about him, so that, that's fun. I think they're excited about all these young kids because they're working hard and got a good group put together. Ricky Mendez will be up next as he takes on uh, Ethan Malovich. Lots of young kids in the room, and they're they're pushing each other. That's good. Lots of wrestle-offs every week, especially in those middle weights at 38, 45. Seem to have more kids in there. It kind of puts more on the end of last weight change and took them out of the middle again. Mendez in on a shot. Big sprawl by Malovich. He's pretty tall. Whoops. A little headlock attempt by uh, Mendez. He's going to give up the takedown. A little that quick on that takedown, I believe. Yeah, he's a little quick on the draw there. And he'll go out of bounds. Malovich the takedown. Well, Malovich is long and lanky, isn't he? Yeah. Ezekiel moving up a weight to 126. Give an escape point to Ricky. Kind of in the under position. Good job of controlling that elbow. Just needs to tip that knee. Sides out the back side. He's got underhook the elbow. Malovich. Trying to fight it off with <laughs> the knee, but there's a half Nelson sunk in there and a takedown for uh, Ricky Mendez. Oh, and he's cranking that half Nelson like he, 
Coach's delight there. Working it hard. He's got Malovich over on his back. Picking up back points. And he needs to get his hips back a little bit. Uh, switch over there and get teed off. Get that weight weight down. He's kind of teed up with his feet way up in the air. Malovich hanging on to that leg. There we go. Now he's going to scoop the head and get a little more chest to chest. Malovich is going to turn into him. Oh, well, there's this shoulder's down. I can't see it on. There it is, the pin. Another pin for the beat diggers. Minute 38 seconds. We'll take that, 138. Got one more JV match to go before we hit the uh, varsity. Morgan Federal Bank, a bank that's committed to their community and keeping banking simple. They are on the cutting edge of banking. Stop by at 321 Ensign and see what options they have available. Morgan Federal Bank, there is a difference. Jesse McDonald steps out, and let's see, what weight's Jesse? He's listed at 138. It's Austin Hill, also at 138. Austin Hill's short and compact. Jesse, another freshman for the Beat Diggers. Toby's little brother. They go ear to ear. Jesse's pretty strong for a freshman. Looks like he works hard in the in the room. Yep. Probably gets beat up by his brother a lot. He does. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, good shot in there by Hill. He gets the takedown. Yeah, looks like Hill's getting an arm bar back there. Yeah, looks like maybe he's got a chicken wing in there. I can't tell as they're facing away from us. Donald's builds a base. Now just a tight waist by Hill. Kick that near foot and break McDonald down. Donald gets caught with that two-on-one, about gets stacked up with it. Trying to peel a pretty vicious two-on-one off of there. Now that he's got an arm bar trying to run it here on the left side. Got that chicken wing way up high. That should have been an illegal hole, but he kind of sagged away from it. Lost that hold. So. That was a classic uh, chicken wing you don't want to see. You now Jesse gets to his feet. Trying to peel that two on one. And he's going to get dumped back down. Now comes a half Nelson by Hill. Jesse looks away from that. Peels it off a couple of times. Uh, Hill trying to run that arm bar. He's trying to sink it in there. Grabs a wrist, tries to run it from the other side. And now he gets that chicken wing up high again. And the uh, uh, official's going to call it uh, potentially dangerous. He needs to call that illegal hold so he knows not to get that up there. Don't need any dislocated shoulders. Mm -mm. 1.3 seconds left here in the first period. Jesse tries to hit a switch, but we run out of time. Two to nothing for the Platte Valley wrestler. That's his choice. He will defer. Austin Hill will take down. And we're underway in the second period. Nice hard switch. Jesse follows him around. Hill gets to his feet. Jesse trying to pull him down. It's a cross face in there trying to reach over and hook the leg. Keeps that cross face going, but. Hill reaches back, hooks up a single leg, walks it around, and gets a reversal. He'll be up four to nothing. Hill working that, trying to get that arm bar in there from the, the left arm. Keeps the right arm tied up. And he's got that illegal chicken wing in there again, but the official's still got to call it... Uh, Potentially dangerous and stop it. There's a whole lot of 138 pounders in the room, huh? There is that about eight of them? Seven of them. Seven? Okay, McDonald tries to stand up on the whistle. 115 on the clock, second period. He's down by four. Jesse McDonald in the 
Pete Digger Cardinal with brush across the back and gold against Austin Hill and almost black singlet. And Platt Valley with Broncos across the rear. And Hill keeps McDonald broken down. Tried to work that arm bar again. Now they'll come back with a power half. Here on the right side, mashes McDonald's head down pretty hard with that. Jesse gets based up. Oh, there's a leg in there. Got a grapevine in with the left leg. It looks like he's trying to splatle McDonald out. I don't know if he's out strong. McDonald turns into him, but breaks the hole. And he gets to build a base. Oh, scrambled. Jesse did a good job getting out of a pickle. Now here comes a cradle attempt by Austin Hill. Donald gets based out. 12 seconds and counting here in the second period. Hill trying to put a half Nelson in. Tony pulls that, or Jesse pulls that away and tries to stand up. Hill will bust him down. He'll hit the third period. Four to nothing for Austin Hill from Platte Valley. Hill will take the down position. It's Jesse's choice. He took tops. Jesse will grab an ankle with a tight waist. Hill trying to get wrist control. Trying to crab walk sideways. Jesse's got an ankle and a near arm. He picks up the ankle. Hill trying to hit a switch now. Jesse's grabbed a hip. Kind of scissor through the legs. Hill. Hard switch. Jesse can't hold him there, and Hill's going to walk it around and come up on top for a six-point lead. And there comes a power half from Hill. And Jesse builds a base. And Hill's got that near leg kind of trapped, and the left elbow trapped underneath. And Jesse can't clear that arm, and Hill's trying to pop him over. He's using that beat digger pick and step move. But Jesse's fighting that off pretty well. As he was trying to walk a half around. Jesse gets his face down and bases up again. We're inside of 50 seconds and counting. Seals putting that uh, chicken wing in there again with the left arm. Special watching that for that potentially dangerous again. Still trying to work that chicken wing from way, teed way out. Now he's got almost a double arm bar look out of it, but doesn't have the other arm. He'll kind of pull back into a hammer lock. Now he's going to work the hammer lock. Step through the leg. Keeps Jesse broken down. We've got 12 seconds to go. Loses that hole. Jesse tries to stand up. Peel the wrist. And five seconds to go. Peel will drive him out of bounds. 4.3 on the left in the match. Jesse down by six. He'll in on the left side. And we're underway. He'll grab an ankle and a tight waist. And that'll be the first set of JV duels. That'll go Platte Valley's way, six to nothing. Okay, let's take a short time out. We'll be back with the varsity wrestling between the Beat Diggers and the Platte Valley Broncos after this short time out on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Welcome back to Estes Park. As we're down to the last Beat Diggers' last duel. Got a little break in the action here between the the JVs and the varsity. As we get set, we're going to kick it off with Wyatt Holder. They should be announcing those in a moment, and she'll take on Tyler's Steinmetz. So while, while we wait for that, let's uh, talk about Morgan Community College. Find out why Morgan Community College is the best choice for your higher education. Visit MCC online at www. MorganCC.edu or stop by the camp, campus for a personal advising session. 
MCC is here to help you imagine your possibilities, believe in yourself, and achieve your goals. And B&B Appliance. When you're shopping for new appliances, shop the best appliance store in Fort Morgan, B&B Appliance. They carry a full, complete line of Whirlpool appliances and will help you find your perfect fit. B&B Appliance in downtown Fort Morgan. And Central Auto Parts. You need your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape, so make sure you take care of them by purchasing the best quality parts at great prices at your local Napa store. That's Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. And Ehrlich Toyota East, whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Ehrlich Toyota East in Fort Morgan will fit you into the car or truck of your choice, serving all of northeastern Colorado. That's Ehrlich Toyota East. Okay, we're still moments away. The wrestlers are ready, but what about Bailey Mechanical Heating and Air Conditioning? They're in Sterling, the company that offers 100% satisfaction. Guarantee all you have to do is just remember this number, 521-7272, for all your heating and air conditioning needs. That's Bailey Mechanical Heating and Air Conditioning. Okay, they're going to start for the little guys again. Caleb Cox will take it on Garrett Schatz. In the 113 weight class, Colin Cole and Brian Rodriguez. Colin Cole at 113 will go against Brian Rodriguez. At uh, 120. Jason Wesseman and Nico Ferdinand. Jason Wiesman will take on number eight. Number eight ranked, Nico Harmeal. In the 126 West Class, Wyatt Holdren. Then we'll start our duel at 126 with Wyatt Holdren going against Tyler Steinmetz. Steinmetz. 132 Weight Class, Wyatt Fowles. Adrian Rodriguez. Wyatt Fowles ranked for the Beat Diggers, number three in the state at 132. He'll take on Adrian Rodriguez. Jade Queen and Dylan Yancey. And Jade Queen will take on Dylan Yancey at 138. Then we jump to Jaron Peterson at 145. He takes on Zach Waite. And Zach Waite. No wrestlers ranked at uh, 138, 145, or 152 for Platte Valley, or even 160. Isaac Morales for the Beat Diggers at 152 takes on Chance Falk. And Baby Arnaldo Maltos Garcia will take on Austin Albright at 160. Baby ranked number two in the state. Randy Woodward at 170 will go against Tino Sidio, ranked number 13 in the state. Raymond Miller and Luis Alvarez. And at 182, versus Raymond Miller will go against Luis Alvarez from Platte Valley. 195, Toby McDonald and R.J. Degas. 195, we got Toby McDonald for the Bay Diggers against R.J. Degas from Platte Valley. And we jump to 120. Daniel Arbaca at 220. 220. We'll go Daniel. against number five ranked Jeremiah Lind. Je- Jeremiah Lind. Jeremiah Lind. And at uh, heavyweight, it'll be Riggs Tan going for the Beat Diggers against. Roberto Lara. Okay, that's our lineup, but we'll kick it off at 126 with uh, Wyatt Holdren. As they get set to go, then we'll finish after this duel is over, then we'll finish off with three uh, JV matches and then a nice long ride home. High Plains Bank, they offer a wide variety of products that can be customized to fit your individual needs. See what what over a century of customer service can do for you at High Plains Bank in Wiggins. Better Electric, Better Electric, 
has better quality, better service, better results. It's better electric. Also, the home of the Sir Sterling Trailers, your big tech's headquarters. Wyatt Holder's ready to check in. Takes on Steinmetz. Steinmetz uh, ranked number 11. Oswaldo, Oswaldo Nunez has a brush ranked number 9 in the state, but uh, Oswaldo had, had some uh, health problems, so he's not uh, wrestling tonight. So Wyatt Holder, next man up, and he just got taken down by Steinmetz. And Steinmetz trying to work a cradle. Holder trying to peel those wrists. They're kind of away from us, but Steinmetz locked it up, and Holder gets roll, rolled over. He's on his back trying to kick out of this mess. Inside shoulders up pretty high. Not for long enough, though. Quick pin for Steinmetz, and that comes 27 seconds into the match. The diggers lose the first one. Platte Valley goes up 6 to nothing on the team side. Wyatt Fowl quickly makes his way out here. As he goes on up against Adrian Rodriguez. And Adrian ranked number four in the state. Wyatt Fowl number three. This is not to be a good one. This could be the match of the night. They were talking about the match of the night. Fowl uh, gets trying to fight out of a single leg takedown here by Rodriguez. And uh, I'm not sure what kind of pickle we got going here. Fowl's got an ankle. Oh, oh he comes out on top. <laughs> he's got some he's got kind a of a tilt. <laughs> is that a tilt? It's a funky looking thing, but it gives him two points. And I don't know, he's probably should have had a couple of back points. Yeah. Out Only the takedown awarded. And now he's got a tilt. It's on a suicide tilt over Rodriguez. As Rodriguez fights that off. Foul hits him with the cross face as Rodriguez stands up. Foul working for a cradle off that. I think he's got it locked up. And suicide, no, it's not a, it's, I guess it is some well, kind of a cradle. He's got him pinned. He's got him stuck. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Rocky's a little slow yeah, on those. Yeah. He's getting in a three-point near fall. That was kind of a weird-looking cradle, but it worked. And he's locking up another one on Rodriguez and he's pulling Rodriguez into him. This is more normal one and their shoulders are down again. Somehow Rodriguez kicks out of that, puts foul on his back for a moment and he's going to get two near fall points or two point reversal and I don't know if he warded. I think he warded there. Only two near fall points for foul. Foul's picked up a knee. is trying to work out from underneath. As we're in the side of 15 seconds to go here in the first period. Foul's got a knee. Rodriguez trying to get a cross face in there. Rodriguez working the foot near ankle. Foul gives up on the knee, tries to stand up. We'll run out of time in the period. Okay, this will be a first trip to the second period. So Okay, Coach Quinlan's up. Not sure what he's asking for another back point or two over there, I think. I wasn't able to listen in on that. Could you hear anything? But it'll be uh, Foul's choice. He's taking top. Moves in on the right side. Good hard side drag. And Rodriguez gets a base. Foul with a cross face. Kind of working for that cross face cradle. Traps that leg. Rodriguez trying to hip into him. Now Foul's he's got some kind of a tilt coming up here. Almost yeah, a guillotine look. Yeah. But he's got a got an arm inside that leg and he's trying to get that guillotine cranked up over the top. As Rodriguez has hooked the knee with his arm tied up underneath. And fouls now, now look like almost got a tilt out of that. 
Rodriguez finally got his hand out of that leg hold there. And foul with a loose cross face. He's got a leg in there. Rodriguez just setting in the base position there. Foul will work a two on one. And there comes a tilt. And Rodriguez is on his back. And he's flat oh, for he's the can. pin. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's a one minute to eight second pin, or excuse me, three minute eight second pin. As we that, we'll tie this duel up six six. How about that? Jade Queen goes against Dylan Yancey here at one thirty eight. So we're one and one at this point. You can see why uh, Wyatt Fowles ranked number three in the state. He may even move up from that, and that's yep. pretty good for a freshman. But he's wrestled a lot. And he's not even the best wrestler in the family. <laughs> uh, his sister uh, wrestled in the world uh, championships this, this fall. So. Uh-oh, Queen's out there, and he got taken down by Dylan Yancey. And gave up a couple of back points, I think. Uh, yeah, he did. He's going to award him two near fall points. You know, there like comes the, that rooster tail tilt again. Boy, they like to work that, don't they? Yeah, that'd be a good thing of showing it early so we can work on that before regionals. Oh, he's riding a tight waist, didn't he? He got it wrapped clear around his back. Jay just trying to get his arms free back up to his base. There's a suicide tilt attempt, and over goes Queen. Queen rolls through. Got a one count on that, but not enough for any back point. Here comes that rooster tail tilt again. Queen trying to free his arms up. A hammer lock on Queen now, hitting a cross face with it. Yancey doing a good job of controlling the arms of Jade Queen. Jade Queen breaks that, tries to base back up. Yancey doing a good job of just hip riding him, isn't he? Yeah. I thought he was going to throw a cradle on there yeah. a couple times. Here comes that tilt again. Uh, Queen won't go over with it. Yeah, trying to beat bigger move here with that. Barbed wire or something. And Queen catches a leg at not before time runs out. Jade's going to be down in a match going into the second period, 4-0. to zero. Oh, gee whiz. Come on, Rocky. You're going to cost one team point against the beat diggers. Really? A team point? <laughs> Takes a team point away from the brush beat diggers. That was a bad call. It, all the coach said is the other guy's been doing the same thing. It's told me to not say. But uh, Rocky has kind of a world of his own. But Jade Queen fighting off a double leg with a nice one. <coughs> Sorry, Rob, that one snuck up on me. <laughs> yeah, this dry throat with all this dry weather. Now we're going to be battling the blizzard getting home. They go out of bounds. Nice counter there by Jade Queen. Down by four. Nice double leg again, and Queen with a good whizzer again. Work over towards Estes Park side. And stepping around the back is uh, Dylan Yancey. For another takedown. Oh, now he's got 
Got Queen in a pickle there. There's a one count. Got the cross face in there and that far arm. And Queen's giving up some back points, trying to roll through it. And they'll be out of bounds. And a work two near fall points over there. Those dress kids seem to be a little bit better shape than the beat diggers. They're, they're trying to work off the bottom. It's caught. He's having trouble keeping his arms clear as he's laying flat. Now uh, Dylan Yancey working the near arm with a deep, that deep tight waist that Platte Valley's been using. He gets the arms out trying to build a base. It's, now gets the right arm chopped. Now Quinn try to switch. But Yancey stays with him. Now there's a cradle and Queen goes over on his back, gets caught. Now trying to kick out of there. He's got a one-arm headlock on Yancey and had him on his back for a moment. He still got him there, but can't put him on his back. Yancey uh, has him around the waist. The whizzer in there by Queen, and he's not even going to get an escape out of that hard work he did there at the end of the period. It's going to be eight to nothing as we go to uh, the third period. <laughs> it's it's nice when the high school stat girl's giving the referee a hard time about his scoring. Says, well, I thought he had some back points there. Got eight point? No, ten. Where'd we get the other two points? I missed missed a couple points or somewhere. Another two near fall. Another two near fall. Got to get up your hip, Jake. Jake falls with his hip there. Yancey's got to come around. Got a cross face on him and an ankle. Jake just tried to side drag and fell to his hip. But Queen grabs a single leg. Still no change of position yet. Yancey trying to back out of there. There's an escape for Yancey. Queen working hard. I think you can tell Yancey's getting tired. Jade ties up forehead to forehead. Minute 10 left here. And Jade tries to throw Yancey and misses the arm. Now they're both in a double wizard position. Oh no! Jade tried to step over and got thrown right to his back. It's going to go about. Oops. Four point. Did you give any back points for that? I don't know. I don't think he did. I didn't see it. Did he oh, give an escape good. point to Jay. Mm -hmm. Coach Weber was wanting some back points out of that. Or reversal or something. Can't argue with him too much on that one. But. Zach Wade yeah. was running out of gas, and all we need is to, a little more time to let him rest there. The wrestlers are ready, but now they're arguing the scorebooks. Coach Quinlan's going to go over and join in. How well, they got it 13 to 1. Stalling. Okay, the Rocky had to stop and uh, remember what position they were in. To give about a minute and a half of breathing time to uh, Joe and Yancey. There's a single leg by Queen. Lifts it up and dumps him back. Kind of whip him over. There's a two-point takedown for Queen. And Queen working the arm. Trying to run an arm bar. Got, got the 
chicken wing in there trying to get out with 25 seconds in crank. Yancey over with it. <laughs> There's a major try in there by Queen. Just didn't have, didn't have it tight enough to crank Yancey over and he'll go out of bounds with 15 seconds on the clock. Queen down by 10. Yancey slowly gets set. Queen in on the right side. And dumps Yancey down. Hits him with a cross face. He's trapped that iron cross on Yancey. Yancey's hooked up a knee. But Queen's cranking on it with two seconds left. Tries to dump him over, but we run out of time. Major decision, 13 to three for Platte Valley. And so that's gonna make it uh, nine to five on the team should side be, for- uh, Should be 10. That's a should, major decision. Uh, should be an extra what, what, point what, what, there, what, what, yeah. Jared Peterson from Rush, Zach Waite from Platte Valley. <laughs> okay, we go with Jaron Peterson and Zach Waite. Jaron at 145. Now Matt Weber's talking to the scorer's table again. I'm not sure what this one's about. Started off the duel with Wyatt Holder losing by a fall. Then it was Wyatt Fowl winning by a fall. And then a major decision by Dylan Yancey, which would be four points. And they do, did get it up there, 10 to five now as the beat diggers got penalized the team point and we're underway here with peterson this will try a little short fireman now comes around behind and zach wait just spins out of there a little knee pick by zach wait jared peterson grabs a single leg caught underneath trying to step up with it Wait with a little hip pry. Well, we're going to get a stalemate. Looking over at these coaches like, what do I do now? <laughs> Jared Peterson in on a high C. Backs out of it. It's caught in the under position, so he didn't like that. Tie up ear to ear, ankle pick try by Peterson. Fighting for inside control. Wait with a lot of heavy, heavy head pressure and just shucks Peterson down, spins around behind and gets the takedown. Jaron over on a hip. He's come up to his base. Wait right now. Tight waist. Side drags Peterson back down, trying to get an arm bar in there. Peterson peels his arm loose. Wait, jumps to the other side. Granby roll by Peterson comes up with a leg. Oh, and man. just as time runs out, runs out, just about gets a reversal. So we'll go to the second period. Zach Wade ahead, two to zero. Jaron Peterson's choice. He chooses down here in the second period. Stand up attempt by Peterson gets pulled right back down. Two on one by Wait. Wait reaches through the crotch with that, trying to hit that rooster tail tilt. Now he comes back up on top, grabs an arm bar, sets it up on his back in the hammer lock position. Peterson tries to come to his knees still. Wait has that hammer lock sitting right on top of Peterson. We might have a 
arm bar or chicken wing in yep, there now. I think he switched over to a chicken wing. We get potentially dangerous. I think Wake got a little high on the shoulder with that chicken wing. Jeremy Peterson sets back on the bottom. Wait on from the left side. Rocky was in the army. <laughs> Stand up by Peterson. It's pulled back down. Has control of the arm, trying to pull it over the top. He's got the elbow. He has weight over on his hip. Just needs to come up, keep control of that arm. Weight's over on his hip. He can swim through high. and grab a head. Kurt Peterson's just about got it. Ah, Wake sticks a leg in there somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Comes back up on top. Oh. Wait, riding hip to hip. Using a lot of pressure on Peterson. Ten seconds left in the second period. Cradle attempt. Peterson comes back up to his knees. We're going to go to the third period. Zach Wade ahead, two to zero. Be Wade's choice. He sure don't go down. Peterson goes right to an ankle, right off the whistle. A switch attempt by. Wait. Going to get him down on his hip. Now Peterson with a two on one. Keeping pressure on Wait. Oh. What? He called him for tying up his ankle with his knees. That's the only thing I can think what he was doing. Peterson gets a stalling call. Yeah. <laughs> Minute 38 left in the, in the match. This isn't Platte Valley's home gym, Rocky. Peterson goes right to the ankle again. Wait in on that leg. Now Jaron comes out to the side trying to Hook up a near side. Wait stands up. Peterson tries to pull him back down. And Wait's going to get an escape. Go up three to zero. And Jared Peterson has an elbow. But oh, and Peterson puts. Wait right to his back. Should have had some back point. I think he's going to get two back points. Gets the takedown. Gets two near fall out of it. Has a leg in. Jared Peterson trying to tilt and a little turk. There's some points, Rocky. Oh. <laughs> a, little, a little slow on that one. He is slow on that. And Peterson getting a little high here. 27 seconds left in the match. Zach, Zach Waite trying to peel the leg. Trying to come up on top. Jared Peterson now on his back. Still in, still in control with eight seconds. Oh, they're going to give him a reversal? Now, now there's a reversal, but there shouldn't have been. Oh. Uh. Anticipating the reversal and now some back points going that way, I guess. Saying five to four for weight. But uh, I think Rocky's slipping. He said he was getting older. But. Oh boy, let's take 30 seconds and we'll be back with more on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 
Welcome back, and we're still at Estes Park in Platte Valley. And Isaac Morales steps out at 152 for the Beat Diggers against Chance Falk. And Morales in on a double leg shot, gets caught underneath, and now he's caught in, under position. I thought he got caught in the front headlock, but that's not really a headlock. It's two on one from way out front, I guess. Morales trying to pop that loose. We call a stalemate to restart him on their feet. Fox at least got the ugliest shoes here tonight. Looks like they belong to the Highland Huskies or something. <laughs> Another double leg shot by Morales. Falk trying to sprawl away from it. Got a cross face and an ankle picked up, and he's going to pop around back for the takedown. Morales down by two, the Pete Digger. Now Falk out trying to run it. He's got a chicken wing, but that was an illegal chicken wing. And he gets cranked over with it. You can do that in college, but it's not supposed to be legal in high school. Can't wrap your uh, hand up around the shoulder. Okay. Or else it's going to go down as we we'll lose by a fall. Minute 17 seconds. Okay, baby goes against Austin Albrighton. He's going to step up to 160 pounds. 160. Garcia and Austin Albrighton. Baby's moving up to 160 for this match. He was on 152, didn't he? Against yeah, Estes Park. He did. Yeah. He wanted to fill that weight. Yeah. Baby giving up some height there. Nice double leg tackle. <laughs> good, good shot by Baby. He went out of bounds. Baby lifted him up and just gently set him down. Baby's got some cool beat digger looking colored shoes out there. Kind of with the yellow anyway. Go out of bounds but work their way back to the center. Maybe a double leg shot in there with a nice tackle. Albrighton trying to sprawl away from it. Use that length and he pops Baby out to the side. He catches a little underhook. He's right on the edge and they'll be out of bounds. And we're back underway. 52 seconds gone. First period. Baby goes down on his fingers there like he does a lot. They're working a 10-foot circle, just faint. And now they'll go forehead to forehead. Maybe the head tap. Albrighton hasn't made a shot yet. Baby with a nice single leg. Albrighton with a whizzer. Works, works it over to the edge. Baby grabs the ankle. Got, Albrighton's got the whizzer. Baby will grab, reach around behind, and they'll be out of bounds. Restart with 31 seconds on the clock. No score. Maybe with a double leg talk tackle. And Albrighton gets ding for uh, his first stalling warning. There's baby in there with that singles. Working out to the ankle. Trying to pop out the back side. As he's setting down, trying to reach out of this as Albrighton's. Uh, uh, gets taken down. Baby a little arm drag. Arm roll attempt by Albrighton, but uh, Baby's got a half Nelson sunk in there, and he's got him pinned. <laughs> How can you not call that a pin? Oh, See my that. goodness. Uh, Baby's not even going to get a back point out of a, a guy that was stuck flat. Only two points out of that move. Remember, 
remember, ladies, you got to help Rocky. One, two. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're set to go in the second period. Baby on the bottom, or we're going to caution on Baby on the start. Everybody thinks I pick on the officials. If they'd do a better job, I wouldn't be saying that stuff. <laughs> okay. And Baby wiggled can't, again. Can't disagree with you. So that's going to cost him a point if he. Okay, Albright moves in on the left side. The baby, quick stand up, feeling the wrist, then turns into Albright and hits the switch, comes up on top, gets the reversal, puts that half Nelson on, and trying to crank Albrighton underneath again. But Albrighton got out of that mess, stands up, hips back in the baby, and he'll be out of bounds. Baby's up four to nothing. We got that cut lower lip on the inside of his lip in this match against Estes Park, but that's holding him together pretty well. Maybe on the left side. We'll move over to the right side, a little spiral ride. Grab the wrist. Pull right and turn. Build a base. And Baby's throws a le standing leg in there and dumps all Brighton down. Has a half Nelson on him. All Brighton's on his back, flat, and there's the pin. No question about that one. As I make that 241, is that right? Yep. 241, pin for baby. Six points back. B Digger still down 11 to 19 in the duel. Gonna lose another six points here. Is Woodward's gonna forfeit. As uh, Woodward's been battling that shoulder injury, yeah. uh, they're not going to throw him out. But, uh, so that that'll move us up to Raymond Miller at 182 against Luis Alvarez. Should use a win here. And uh, how old is Raymond? Is he, what, what I think he's a junior. Oh, there he is. Hadn't wrestled. Okay, he's going against Luis Alvarez. A lot of young kids on the brush roster and a lot of first timers. He diggers graduated a lot of seniors last year. Raymond's a big, strong kid, though. A little hand slapping and forehead uh, bumping. There's a nice single. And uh, nice job by Miller. He's into that single leg, and he's got a takedown. How about that? Good job of staying with it by Raymond. Peters down in the duel, 25 to 11 after that last match. Did we get a locked hands? Yep, inexperience there. We'll restart, 11 on the clock. Good hard side drag by Miller. Another one. Alvarez trying to build a base. Stand up. Let's Thought Miller was gonna. Oh, he's got. Oh, he's got a full Nelson on there for a second. Yeah. But Rocky was out of position that time. It was good for us. And now Alvarez is gonna stand up and get the escape to tie it up. They'll be on their feet with 40 seconds left first period. Go forehead to forehead it again. Break apart right in the ten foot circle, right over the white bobcat. And there's Miller in with a single leg. He's in there with a deep dumps him right to his back. Gets the 
no takedown yet. Uh, where are we in Flat Valley's gym? There's finally the takedown. And Miller with a deep, tight waist. Alvarez working the wrist free. And there's a half Nelson by Miller cranking it on Alvarez. And that's going to be. Uh oh. Did it again. He got caught that time. Penalty point for uh, Full Nelson. So that's two penalty points on Miller. Miller's choice. And Coach Quinlan says take neutral. Doing a good job with these takedowns. Okay, we're going neutral. I don't understand why the coaches can't coach their kids. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He's... Ray Miller was uh, saying, Coach, what do I do? Well, and he warned the Platte Valley coach for coaching his kid. <laughs> Both rests are just tied up ear to ear. Wow. <laughs> The Flat Valley wrestler just looked, stopped and looked over at his coaches, but now he gets to take the one. So. And Miller's on the bottom. He's getting caught with a hard cross face. Sorry, folks. Sometimes I get to watch the match and I forget to talk. But, uh, as Miller's hooked up a, a leg that gets stretched out. And now that was 10 seconds on the ankle yep. and no call. At least you could be consistent if you're not going to call them. We did, now we got a little blood time. Uh oh, we got some blood time going too. Just tuned in. Uh, Beat diggers are down in this duel 25 to 11. We started at uh, 126 pounds. Wyatt Holder lost by a fall, and Wyatt Fall came. Wyatt Fowl came back with a fall over Adrian Rodriguez at 308. Jade Queen lost a major decision 13 to 3 to Dylan Yancey. Jaron Peterson lost in his match to Zach Waite by one point. I think that was uh, four to five or five to six, something like that. Then uh, at 152, Isaac Morales. Uh, lost by a fall to Chance Falk. And Arnoldo Maltos Garcia came back with a pin over jo Austin Albrighton at 160, 170. Uh, Beatingers gave up a forfeit uh, win to Tino Sidio from uh, Platte Valley. And we're at 182 with Raymond Miller going against Luis Alvarez. Miller down by one. And now it'll be Alvarez's turn to get a caution on the start. And he gets a lecture too. No points awarded until you do about three of those. Okay. Miller trying to work out from under. Alvarez uh, pops over the top. Now he's trying to trap that far elbow. Uh, Basing up. 30 seconds left here, second period. Alvarez uh, working the two on one on the right wrist. It's forehead in the back of Miller. Well, Miller trying to build a little bit of a base. He's up to his knee. Alvarez hooks a leg up. It's that little scissor circle around the near leg with his toes. And he gets out to the right side and busts Miller down when they head to the third period. Miller down by one. Platt Valley's choice. And Savarez for Platt Valley takes a down position. Set, 
Miller in on the left side. Good hard side drag. Probably has bases right back up. Tries to stand up. Miller trying to put a half Nelson on the Alvarez. He's based up. He tries it again as they go around in a circle. Now they grab the arm and break Alvarez down. Now he's getting that half up there. But Alvarez gets back to his knee. Now Miller half Nelson from the other side and another full Nelson for that inexperience going to cost him another point. That's going to cost him two. For the third uh, penalty point? Yep. So that's two, yep. And that's the match. One, one, two. No, that's not right. That's not right. You wouldn't give them the two points, you'd just call the match. So they're going to talk that one over. It's the first match of the year. Maybe we're just resting. Well, we're going to have to check on that one, but they're going to call it. That's another six points for Platte Valley. What's that? No. 31 to 11 now. Okay, let's take a short time out. We'll be back with more on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. Toby McDonald steps out for the Beat Diggers at 195 against R.J. Degas. And Toby trying to hook up a front headlock and snap him down, spins around behind him. It's a takedown. Toby moving up to 195. Working a cross face. Trying to work a cradle now. He'll just pop the elbow. He's working that cross face cradle hard and over goes uh, Degas. And he's looking at the lights here. Trying to keep that inside shoulder up. Toby's crunching down on his cradle. And Toby going for the pin. He's trying to hook a, a knee. He's on Rocky's pin there. I don't know. That inside shoulder's somewhere. But Toby's got the headlock on him. He's got 58 seconds and counting. As Toby's going for the pin, he gives up on that hole. Now gets out here chest to chest with the headlock. He scoops, scoops the arm. I don't know. I think we're going to finally get a pin call out of this. I'm not going to put his hand in the air or uh, slap the mat. So, <laughs> okay. That's kind of strange. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's been a strange night on the referee inside. <laughs> Toby McDonald's going to pick up the pin win. Make it 17 to 31 as Daniel Arbaca takes on number five ranked. Jeremiah Land. Well, don't go away because we've got uh, the heavyweights and then three lightweights from 106 to 120. A little scramble and they go out of bounds. Lobach is trying to get down. Uh, A weight instead of work wrestling at 220. He's giving up about 20 pounds. As they work to the far edge, Parker gets caught in the front headlock. Uh, Barker weighed in at 204. He'll be out of bounds. They go around and scramble. Back underway. Daniel Arbaca was ranked earlier in the year, but then uh, is in, in this week's rankings. So a 
They'll restart as they went out of bounds. No score. 110 on the clock. First period. Do some hand fighting. Uh, Baca. A little underhook. They'll come back and wrist tie right in the 10 foot circle. Going forehead to forehead. Do some hand fighting. Urbaca uh, comes up. And there's a throw attempt by Land. And Urbaca backs away from that. Land's still trying to do a throw. When he throws Urbaca right to his back, has uh, got a standing headlock from the front. Puts Urbaca down for a two count, I think. And here comes that high chicken wing again by Platte Valley. And they're going to go. That's going to be a four mo point move for Jeremiah Land. A two point takedown or two point near fall. Rebaca caught right at the edge, and he'll say, Let's go back to the center, they're out of bounds. Baco gets set on the bottom. And he tries to crawl forward and stays behind his shoulders. Has a half Nelson with Arbaca up and then we'll run out of time in the period. Arbaca based up. That's good. Hard to make a half Nelson work from there. Yep. Arbaca takes down here in the second period. Land must have deferred. So Daniel will go down. Land in on the left side. Misses with a cross face. Obaka tries to reach back and hook a knee. Land tries to snap him back. Or back a, or back a stands up, trying to peel the wrists, and we get locked hands. We can't call locked hands. Locked hands. Walker uh, had a hand down on the mat. Yeah, maybe two. So he basically hadn't stood up, so it cost him a point to make it four to one. Land working from the far wrist underneath. He breaks our Baca down. There's two on one now, and I was going to so try to do that tilt, reach through the legs, but gives up on that. Comes back to the wrists. As they're staying parallel, Arbaca trying to build a base. And land a little spiral ride. A little underhook. Arbaca kips back into him. Lands a little high. Arbaca trying to back out of there. As Land follows him around, bust Arbaca forward. Stand pretty parallel here. Yeah, he's, he finally puts a half Nelson in. Yeah, he doesn't get out to the side. No, nope. down to 35 seconds of counting here in the second period. Arbaca needs to get a point or two out of this period. He started in the down position. He's trying to stand up. And land, now he gets to his feet, lands around the waist, dumps him back down. Down inside of 12 seconds to go. Zarbaka so just can't build a base now. So lands just staying parallel, hanging on two on one, not doing a thing with it. And we'll run out of time in a period. Land once down here in the third period. Arbacus has a lot of energy in this period. Bach in on the left side. Hard side drag on Land. Dumps him down. Land right back up. Tries a Gramby roll. Arbaca comes around. Gets a cross face on him. A near ankle. And... Uh, 
working that cross facing near ankle on Lamb. Now he's going to try to do a cradle that lands faced up and trying to stand up. Uh, Walker can't keep that hand control. Land trying to peel away the hand. Now uh, Barker gets him over on a hip. Land reaches back and hooks an ankle. He's going to run on the edge. Arbaca's going to bust him towards the edge. Arbaca's knees out of bounds. Land's going to step over and uh, land about to pop out the back side. And they're going to send him back. And uh, it should have been called out of bounds like 15 seconds earlier, but at least he didn't award a point for an escape. It's 4-1 for Jeremiah Lane. He didn't call him out of bounds. He called stalemate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Well, Barker working from the right side as Land stands up, trying to peel the wrist. Well, Barker's going to bring him back down, tries to dump him down. Land hits a switch, and he's going to come up on top. We know Arbaca's got a knee. Now he's finally gives up on that knee and will give the reversal to Lane. And Lane stand parallel again, working the wrist as he keeps Arbaca broken down by just keeping his head mashed into the mat. Well, Daniel builds a base. Lando. Uh, Working on the wrist. Trying to pull the left wrist underneath. Now get out the side and hook an ankle. On the side of 15 seconds to go. Herbaca broken down with Land just lay, staying parallel. Uh, Land's going to try a power. A half Nelson cranks it over with a half a second. And that'll be the match. We'll give it six to one win for Platte Valley. Let's take a short timeout. We'll be back with the heavyweights after this 30-second timeout on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. <coughs> Welcome back. We're at 285, Riggs 10 against uh, Roberto Lara. Looks like Riggs is a little bit bigger one out there. And Riggs only goes at 221. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be much bigger. No. Just underway here in the first period. Heavy pressure on the head by Riggs Tan. Laura backs away from that. Both wrestlers just testing each other out, popping the head, looking for hand control. No shots yet. Great uh, underhook. We're both battling that little cough here tonight. Sorry about that. They go forehead to forehead. 35 seconds left, first period, no score. We get a stalling warning. Yeah, there's a shot by. Oh no. <laughs> there's a takedown by uh, Roberto Lara on the Riggs Town. Pam. That's just inexperienced. Kind of uh, limp armed out of that whizzer. And Laura trying to power half, but we're going to have in the second period. It'll be uh, Griggs' choice for the beat diggers. Griggs going to defer to Laura. Laura takes top. Okay. And Riggs is another one. That's, is he a junior? Yeah. I hadn't wrestled much. But 
He's working off the bottom. And Lara's working back for an ankle. Gets rigs over his hip for a moment. Which builds a pretty good base. And Lara grabs an ankle and just busts Riggs over. Gets him on his back trying to get chest to chest and Riggs is pinned. Uh, he hasn't had enough wrestling experience to know not to stay off your back like that. He kind of put himself in that pickle. And that's really going to wrap this thing up for Platte Valley. Let's see, that makes it 40 to 17. Three matches left in the duel. 106 pounds, Caleb Cox for Brush to take on Garrett Chance. He's ranked number Platte seven Valley. in the seven in the state. Sorry about that. Had a program here somewhere. Until it Shantz or Shantz or... Oh, there it is. Underway here in the first period as they tie up. Underhooked by Caleb Cox. Heavy on the head, just a little throw by. Gets behind Shantz, has a wrist and a half, has Shantz over on his back. Ties it up pretty tight. Gets teed out there, and there's going to be the, should be the pin. There it is. Caleb Cox with a 33-second pin. We'll go to 113 pounds. Colin Cole and Brian Rodriguez. Colin Cole and Brian Rodriguez. Willow Coffee, Tea, and Smoothies in G Suites Bakery. Try a new breakfast bowl or delicious breakfast burrito with your Willow Coffee or Tea. They're open 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and 7 to 4 on Saturday. Stop by 921 Edison in Brush today. Okay, we're underway with our 113 pounders. Colin Cole and Brian Rodriguez. And there's Cole with a takedown. And he's out to the side trying to put a half Nelson in. He's got the far wrist tied up. As Rodriguez trying to hip into him, step over. Cole gets back a little better riding position. Working two on one. They're trying to give up on that. Now he's trying to put a three quarter Nelson on. And uh, Rodriguez has thrown in that reverse half. Now he's got the three quarter Nelson on. As Rocky uh, gave the escape a reversal to uh, Rodriguez, and Colin got Rodriguez on his back, and now he's taking control again. So. Uh, Colin Coles, not sure what he's got there. He's got a leg tied up and overhooked on the head. It's kind of one arm headlock. 44 seconds left, first period. And uh, Rodriguez has got a leg in there, but Colin uh, pops out the backside and they'll be out of bounds. <coughs> kind of getting some strange positions there. Rodriguez got some good hips. Uses them hips, hip in, and then pops over. Rodriguez tries to stand up. Colin will grab the right ankle and then the left one. Now Gets a little high. Rodriguez trying to pop out of there. Collins got that barbed wire tied up on Rodriguez, but he's going to stand up and walk away from that. And it's only a one point lead, four to three for Colin Cole, and they're on their feet. 15 seconds and counting, first period. Rodriguez looks like he's about a foot and a half taller than Colin. So they go forehead to forehead. And we're into the second period with Colin Cole up by one. Colin's choice, he's going to defer it. Rodriguez wants down. Sets down, facing away from us. Colin in on the left side. Chops a near arm. He's locked, locked it up underneath. 
And rolls that two on one forward. Keeps the arm tied up. Looks like he's trying to set an arm bar or a tilt up. That does a little suicide tilt, but Rodriguez rolled through it. And Cullen keeps that arm bar in there, trying to tilt again. Rodriguez trying to hip over him. And Cullen has got, got him set up, cranked over, but he needs to reach back, scoop the head. Rodriguez is on his back for a two count. Two-point near fall for Collin as Rodriguez got out of that hold. And gets in a base. Collin with a tight waist to the right hand. Now he's a little head lever and runs it around for a moment. Rodriguez bases up. Collin loses that wrist. Keeps a tight waist on him. Chops that arm. Pits the knees on the near arm, puts that head lever in there, out walking around, has a half Nelson, dumps Rodriguez over to his back, getting back points, and Rodriguez trying to roll out from under there. Somehow, Colin can't hold him there. Now Rodriguez has tied up an arm and reached back for an ankle, and he's going to get a reversal out of it. Should have had a three-point near fall there, I think. Yeah. And Collins got to come out from underneath as he's trying to fight off a deep pass half Nelson by the taller Rodriguez. That's a Collins will pull that half half out of there, but Rodriguez right back with it. Collins does a little arm roll. Gets Rodriguez a little bit high for a moment. Rodriguez right back, staying parallel with that long arm and the half Nelson from the right side. And head to the third period. Calling up eight to five, I think. Let's look at the other scoreboard. That's what it says. Collins' choice, and he's going to take down. It's set. Rodriguez on the right side. Going to get a caution on the start on Rodriguez by a Valley wrestler. Cole's ready. The lecture's almost over. Now it calls uh, Rodriguez in the top. Comes in on the right side. Grabs an ankle. Colin gets up, trying to peel the wrists. And Rodriguez dumps him over. Cole, nice switch, comes up on top and gets a reversal. And uh, trying to set up that tilt, I think, that uh, Rodriguez trying to hip over. And uh, he's got an arm tied up in a kind of a barbed wire look. And we're going to get the reversal for Cole and then a reversal for Rodriguez. And Cole's got to get that arm cleared out. He lost his whole arm and wrist and everything's clear around on his back. That's got to hurt. So Rodriguez not sure what to do with it. Now come back with a cross face, try to trap the far shoulder. But Cole finally gets his wrist out of a pickle and he's... Well, I thought he was about caught in a cradle, but now he bases up. Got a minute to go. And uh, Colin tries to pull that wrist free. There's Rodriguez riding parallel. Ten to seven now. There's now we're 50 seconds left here in the match. Colin caught trying to base up. Rodriguez has got an arm pulled way back. Colin's got a hold of the arm. <laughs> Rodriguez hanging on to the ankle, hanging on to the ankle, hanging on to the ankle some more. Now he finally let loose of it. Go for the other one. As Collins based up, Rodriguez looks like he's trying to get a headlock or something, a cradle. Nope, not a cradle. I don't know. Yeah, he's got a cradle under there. Does he have the leg? I guess. Got a stalling warning on Collin, but he's got a cradle locked up on him. Ten seconds to go, and Rodriguez can't work the cradle, and Collins just got to ride this out, and he's going to get the victory, ten to seven. Unless we get any points awarded after the whistle, but one match to go, then three JVs, and that'll end up this uh, Pete Diggers part of this triple duel. 
So Jason Wiesman will have to go out against Nico Harmiel, right? Number eight in the state for Platte Valley. Colorado Plains Medical Center. Accidents and illness strike day and night. Every second counts as a level three trauma center. Colorado Plains Medical Center is ready to handle any type of an emergency. And as Jason's going to shake hands with Nico. Yeah, there's some tall kids out there. Yeah, there is. Jason bumping up from about 75 pounds last year, wasn't it? Ooh, Armillo with an arm drag there. And he's getting that arm out of shape. He gets dumped down with a takedown by Armillo as he got him around the waist. He's been sitting on the bottom. So restart. Wiesman throws his arms in the air. Armillo throws a grapevine in on the right side. Now double grapevine. That doesn't look like any fun at all. And working a power half off that double grapevine. And there's some back points going on Armillo's way. That Valley leads the duel 40 to 26 right now. And Wiesman's in trouble trying to get off his back. He kind of rolled through. Gives up three near fall points. Armeal. Armeal goes right back to that leg. Yeah, he's. Doesn't need to stick the other one in this time, I think. Now he's going to try to split Jason out there. Jason fighting that off. He's reached back and hooked the head. Oh, it's not good. Armeal said thanks and dumps him right over on his back. There's the fall. It didn't go the beat diggers way, so Mio's going to pick up the pin at uh, 131 of the match. And that does it for the duel. Platte Valley is going to kick us pretty bad here. 46 26, final score. Okay, well, let's take a uh, two-minute timeout. We'll come back and uh, wrap up the scoring here on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Okay, welcome back. Jason Moreno stepping out for his third match of the night. And he tries a throw on Blaine Calson. Gets thrown on his back, but he rolls through it. And he has Calson on his back going for the pin as he's got him locked up in a headlock. Both hands under the shoulders, but he's picking up back points. Jason to take down. Near fall. He might adjust that headlock a little bit. He's got his elbow on the mat, so Calson's shoulders are barely up. Just lift the head a little bit more. Maybe we can get that quarter inch of a shoulder back down. Calson trying to roll out of there. Now Jason readjusting that headlock a little bit. Inside shoulders a little high. There it is. There's a pin win for Jason Moreno. That comes at 105 of the match. Or 104. Maybe even 103. Let's say 103. Jason Moreno with another fall. 143 pin over Andrew Gary. In the first JV duel. Now we'll have uh, Chase Barnett going against Caleb Johnson. Chase lost to by a fall to uh, Colton Buckridge from Platte Valley in their first match, but I think he won his match over the Estes Park wrestler. As uh, that one was. In the first, the only JV match in that duel, but oh, there's a nice takedown by Caleb Johnson. There's a two point lead on Chase Barnett. Barnett trying to base up, and uh, Johnson's just going to let him go. There's a shot by Barnett. 
Johnson catches a front headlock, reaching for an ankle. It shucks him by and comes around the other side with the uh, second takedown of the match. And he just immediately lets uh, Chase Barnett go for the escape. Oop. <laughs> Did a little ankle peck completely away, but still jumped on uh, Barnett for another takedown. Here's the escape. Shoots right in, but they'll be out of bounds. 59 seconds gone here in the first period. A lot of action. Okay, we're back underway. Working from the bottom. Caleb Johnson. From that rooster tail we've seen quite a bit of from the Platte Valley wrestlers. Barnett bases out against that. Going to base up, and now uh, Johnson's just going to turn him loose. His fourth escape. Just third one, I guess. Okay. His Barnett gets caught in the front headlock and out to the side of the near side cradle and Barnett's on his back with Johnson going for the pin. Barnett kicking hard. Gets, gets off his back. And Johnson stepping through the legs. Keeps that cradle locked up. Five seconds left. And there's three point near fall but uh, another half second we may get out of this uh, pickle. And two more back points for uh, Caleb Johnson. They're saying eight to four up there, but I don't think that's right. We had at least got four three. takedowns and uh, some near fall points. So, yeah. yeah. This would be a I got a score of 11 to three. They've got eight to four. Sounds good to me. We're talking over here. One more match to go after this one. Hope that snowbird isn't out there flying around. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to go look, so. They're kind of visiting away over there. I got it up to 10 to 3. And that's what they're going to call it. Yeah, maybe only give him two on those. No, they only had the one near falls, so I don't know how he come up with ten. Okay. Barnett will work from the top here. Yeah, on the right side. And Johnson with a quick switch. Barnett follows him around. But Johnson will stand up and run away for the escape. Our scoreboard that's 12 to 3. Barnett gets caught in the front headlock and Johnson out the side has that near side cradle locked up on Barnett again, rolls him over and chases in trouble. Is uh, Johnson there? Lost that cradle. Looks like he's going to give up on it. Gets two back points out of that. And makes it 15 to 3 up there. And we get an escape point for Barnett. 15 to 4 out there. Barnett with a shot. But Johnson in on a double leg. Dumps Barnett down. Another two point takedown. This scoreboard's getting to be a mess. Can you read yours? 17 to 4 up there. No. Desperation. Barnett gets an escape for. Caleb Johnson let him lose. They worked back into the 10 foot sec circle. 38 seconds. Johnson with a long range shot. Barnett sprawls away from it, but it's taken down anyway. And they're inside of 25 seconds to go, and Johnson's going to give up another escape. 19 to 5, and there's Johnson with a single leg shot with 15 seconds left. Barnett with an underhook trying to throw Johnson. And block that. Oh, nice little arm roll by Johnson. Comes up, 
and gets takedown on Barnett. Run out of room, but that'll be a tech ball, 19 to 6 on the scoreboard. Whoops. As Chase uh, Barnett loses that one. 19 to 6, one match left. It'll be Jesse McDonald against Colton Moore. Our last match of the night. AC Ice proudly supports local high school sports throughout northeastern Colorado. When you need ice, don't just settle for any frozen water. Get AC Ice. You can find it at any local grocery store or convenience store near you. Final That's match of the night. Ice. At 145 pounds, Jesse McDonald for Brush, Colton Moore for Platte Valley. McDonald in there with a head tie. They break away. Come back forehead to forehead. Jesse McDonald in on a single leg. Picks it up. Cross face by Moore. And cross face able to get out of there and back away from it. The good double leg by McDonald. Just got his head tore off with that cross face. Yeah. He's in there deep with it. Back in the forehead to forehead tie up. Most of the Platte Valley wrestlers are tall and thin. Still hand fighting out there, popping the head. Arm drag by Colton Moore. This is a two on one on Jesse McDonald. Jesse breaks that tie. I'm going to get a double stall. Even though the rush wrestler is the only one that shot. <laughs> yeah. There's another shot by Brush. Colton Moore goes 145, Jesse 138. Another shot by Jesse McDonald. Front got caught in a front headlock, but still on his feet. I think that's four shots by Jesse, none by Platte Valley, but they both get dinged for stalling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesse will be working from the top in the second period. Colton Moore chooses the down position after Jesse deferred. Jesse goes right to an ankle, busts Colton Moore down. McDonald gets a two on one. Now he switches to a cross face, trying to cradle, but Moore comes back up to his base. Oh. Jesse with a spiral ride. Moore stands up. Jesse stands up with him, trying to dump him down. Pulls more down to the mat. Trying to get wrist control under there. Now he's got a half. Good wing attempt by Moore. Now inside the leg on McDonald. Looks like he's going to hit that Peterson and puts Jesse to his back. Gets the reversal on Jesse. Picking up near fall points. Jesse's going to get out of that. So McDonald down 5-0 to zero here in the second period. Jesse trying to base up a power half by Moore. He lets that go. Stand up. 
Stand up by Jesse. He turns around, grabs an ankle, tries to sprawl away. Moore's got a double leg. Jesse trying to sprawl out of that. Reaches over the top, grabs the ankles. Donald still has one ankle. We're going to get a stalemate. So Jesse will be on the bottom still with two seconds left in the second period. We go to the third period. Jesse McDonald down in this match, 5-0. to zero. McDonald's choice here in the third period. He chooses down. Moore, Moore sets from the left and flinches. Going to get cautioned on the start. Jesse tries to switch on the whistle. Moore goes right to an ankle on it. Stand up by McDonald. Turns into him and going to get the escape. Back in the forehead to forehead tie. Jesse just trying to pull Moore down to the mat. Moore's going to back away from that tie. Comes back in. Moore gets inside control. Jesse backs away from it. Single leg try by Moore. Jesse ends up on top. So he's going to get the takedown. Jesse's down five to three now. We're going to go out of bounds. Five to three in favor of the Platte Valley wrestler with 55 seconds left here in the third period. Jesse goes right to an ankle on the whistle. Sit out attempt. Jesse's got a cradle locked up. Trying to trying to pull Moore over to his back. Moore's just belly down tight. Jesse trying to step between the legs. Pulls Moore back. He's going to pick up back points. 30 seconds left in the match. Jesse just needs to hold him here. Uh, Jesse lets go of the cradle. Moore comes back out on top. Jesse McDonald up 6-6, six to six, and there's an escape for Colton Moore. It's tied 6-6 six to six with five seconds left in the third period. We're going to go to overtime. First overtime match of the night. As they see what they're waiting on, get the clock set for one minute. Oh, Moore in on a single leg. He's in deep on it. Jesse trying to sprawl. Reaches over top, grabs an ankle. Grabs the other ankle, trying to get outside that tie. Now Moore switches over to a double. And we're going to get a stalemate. 34 seconds left. The first period of overtime. They tie each other's hands up. Donald reaches up, pops the head in on a single leg as Moore again. Not as deep this time. Jesse can spin around behind here. Now Moore grabs a tighter single leg. Jesse's grabbing for a wrist and a cross face, trying to pick up that ankle. Five seconds left in this period. Jesse needs to pick up that ankle, and we're not we're not going to get a score here in the 
overtime period, still tied 6-6. Official checking with the scorer's table. Gets confirmed what he wanted to know. <laughs> well, now, let's see. I was going to put Jesse down. So we'll have two more 30 second periods, right? Yeah, he's got, there they get it set to 30 seconds. Jesse stands up right on the whistle, peels the wrist, gets the escape. They're tied up forehead to forehead. Moore's got wrist control on McDonald. Okay. Now, Moore gets a choice in the down position. Stand up by Moore, goes, McDonald goes right down to the ankle. Moore squirts out of bounds. <laughs> Only two seconds gone. Talking over this timing, I think. So they're talking about the scoring, or the timing. Now we go talk to Coach Weber. And I guess we're set to go. They're going to run it down to 26 seconds. So yeah. Well, goes right back to the ankle again, pulls Moore down. Moore's trying to hit a switch. Jesse's still got that ankle tied up. He's gonna get, get he's gonna get called for stalling if he doesn't get off of that's that. That's gonna ah. be the that's gonna be a point. Yep. Oh. Had one way early on that double stall. Ties it up seven seven. Gotta hold him for twelve seconds here. McDonald goes right back to the ankle. He's got to let go of that thing. He's got to let go of the ankle. There he comes to it. Moore trying to stand up. Okay. Green's choice down. 30 seconds. He goes right back to that ankle. He's got to let go of that thing. And now Jesse's got some weight on him. Jesse pulls him back down. Back up to his base is Moore. Stand up by Moore. Jesse pulls him back down to the mat. He's trying to work up the hips. We're going to get... Jesse's going to run out the period. And Jesse McDonald's going to win this in sudden death overtime. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the winner. And a sudden victory. Eight to seven for Jesse McDonald. I'd, I'd have to say that'd be our match of the night, <laughs> yeah. even though Baby had a couple great matches too. But uh, 
then uh, so did uh, foul. But that that was one battle of wills, wasn't it? It was. And he was giving up uh, weight too, because Jesse's one thirty-eight and his opponent was one forty-five. Okay, let's take a couple minutes. We'll be back and wrap it up on ten ten KSIR and KSIR dot com. Okay, we're on and back on the air here from Estes Park. Looking at the detailed force forecast, says uh, snow and uh, three to five inches tonight. They said he was going to have the snow plows out, so make us a little worried. So uh, uh, that doesn't sound like any fun. We want to get home before that five inches gets on the ground, Jason. So you got a wrap up there of the uh, Estes Park brush? Yeah. Uh, First duel of the night, Brush versus Estes Park. Brush won that duel 69-12. to Jason Weisman re- received a forfeit. Wyatt Holdren won his match 6-5. to Wyatt Fowl got a pin in the first period and won his match. Jade Queen, though, got pinned in the second period by Caden Brown of Estes Park. Jaron Peterson received a pin win at 145 pounds in the second period. Arnaldo Maltos Garcia got a first period pin over his opponent from Estes Park, Eric Todd. Then at 160 pounds, Estes Park received a forfeit win. 170 pounds, Randy Woodward got the win with a pin in the second period over Billy McWhorter. And from there on out, I think all we had was forfeits. Toby McDonald received a forfeit for Brush. Josiah Fuentes from Brush received a forfeit as did Daniel Abarca. Riggs Tannett Heavyweight got a forfeit win and Caleb Cox and Colin Cole also received forfeits and Brush won that duel 69-12. to Okay, then we go to, well there's a JV match. There's Chase Barnett that won over Finn Turney. Uh, against Estes Park, and then uh, let's go to the uh, Platte Valley Brush. Let's do the JVs first. It was uh, Jason Moreno with a pin win over Andrew Gary from Platte Valley. Uh, then uh, Jason came back in the second round of uh, JV matches and won by a fall at 103 over Blaine Calson. Uh, Ezekiel Munoz uh, lost by a fall to Nate Dill at 322. Chase Barnett uh, lost by a fall at 51 seconds. Then Chase come back in the second round and lost 19 to 6 to Caleb Johnson from Platte Valley in a wild one. Thomas Mel- Metlin uh, with a 19 to 6 loss to uh, Ryan Kelts from Platte Valley. Then uh, Ricky Mendez uh, loses by a fall to Ethan Malovich from Platte Valley. Jesse McDonald lost uh, 6 nothing to Austin Hill, Platte Valley at 138. Then uh, moved up to 145 for his second match and one su- sudden victory in the match we just called 8-7. to seven. And on the varsity side, we started at 126. Brush against Platte Valley is Wyatt Holdren losing by a fall in 27 seconds. Wyatt Fowl. Uh, ranked number three in the state at 132, freshman. Went against Adrian Rodriguez and got a 308 pin over Rodriguez. Jade Queen at 138. Uh, lost 13 to three, major decision to Dylan Yancey. Uh, Jaron Peterson lost six to five to Zach Waite from Platte Valley. Isaac Morales uh, went against uh, Chance Falk and lost by a fall at 117. Arnoldo, Arnoldo Maltos, Baby Garcia won uh, his match by a fall 241 over Austin Albrighton. Uh, Randy Woodward set out, gave up forfeit uh, to Tino Sidio from Platte Valley. That was at 170. 182, Raymond Miller. Uh, Lost a tough one, five to four, to Luis Alvarez from Platte Valley. Toby McDonald uh, won his match over R.J. Degas from uh, Platte Valley by a pin. And Daniel Arbaca, in a good match, lost six to one to uh, number five ranked Jeremiah Land from Platte Valley. 
Or Barker trying to get down to 195. Ru- breaks 10. Uh, won his, or lost his match to uh, Roberto Loya from Platte Valley. Then Caleb Cox for the Bay Diggers at 106. Won his match over Garrett Shantz. Colin Cole won his match uh, 10 to 7 over Brian Rodriguez from Platte Valley, and Jason Wiesman lost by a fall at uh, 131. And Platte Valley wins the duel over the Brush Bay Diggers, 46-26. So I want to thank you for tuning in, and of course uh, I want to thank all of our fine sponsors. I didn't get to all of them, but uh, I want to thank all our fine sponsors, and of course. We've got uh, Julie running the board back at headquarters. So uh, when you tune in, we'll be back on the air. But John Beltran will. And I had that. S- yeah, there it is, our uh, schedule. Right, and, now, and we're going to have one uh, Sterling duel. That'll be January 14th, so that'll be a week from yeah, today. And then we've got a duel the 13th against La Hanta, so that Jason's filling out uh, the sheets. So we got a match that I wasn't aware of, so maybe we'll be on the air the 13th with La Hanta for the Beat Diggers, so that ought to be a lot of fun. But uh, the girls are about to wrap this thing up. They're getting nervous about the weather. So I want to thank you all for tuning in. And, of course, Jason Holdren for stepping in as we're battling our colds and does a great job. Always enjoy working with him. And so we'll wrap it up. Thanks again, Julie, for running the board. Great job. And we'll hope you tune in to Beat Digger Sports on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Good night from Estes Park.